if the victims of december tsunami had even an hour to run to safety experts say thousands of lives would have been saved professor timothy beach is the director of the center for the environment at georgetown university in washington dc what we need is a system of buoys both uh, those that are on the ocean floor pressure gauges as well as those tethered at the ocean surface and then we need a system of satellites as well. The United States already has a satellite system to predict weather and to pass along other information to organizations in the U.S. and in the Pacific. And though such a system is expensive to install and maintain, the costs pale in comparison to the funds needed to rebuild the areas affected by the tsunami. But technology is only part of the solution, according to Jack Harold director of the Institute for Crisis, Disaster, and Risk Management at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. To tell the police and fire and people on the coast in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, for example, that a tsunami has been occurred, in and of itself does nothing unless they have the capability to alert the people on the beach or on the waterfront and the villages and towns along the shore. And there's, our, there's been a pre-planning and some information on how to evacuate, where to go, how to get out of the danger area. He says local authorities need training on what to look for and how to quickly evacuate coastal areas. And Professor Beach says on-the-ground warning systems do not need to be high-tech. For example, in Bangladesh, there's a system of warning by bikes and whistles to warn people of cyclones and uh, the rise in water that occurs with that, which has caused in the past deaths of thousands and thousands of people. If there is going to be some kind of regional warning system, there will have to be the same kind of cooperation shown in providing disaster relief. This is an area that has had difficulties working out cooperative arrangements. Walter South Anderson Asia is the Associate Asia. Director of South Asia Studies at SAIS, the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies in Washington, D.C. He and his family were on a beach in Sri Lanka when the tsunami struck but they managed to run to safety. He says long-term political cooperation is needed between countries and between factions. That is a problem in, in much of the region, that you have domestic turmoil and violence and, and groups who are fighting secessionist movements, as in Indonesia and in Sri Lanka and elsewhere in the region. And uh, you're going to have to work out something with them if the system is to be effective. Otherwise, it will break down. Professor Anderson says another conflict needs to be worked out as well. A major obstacle to that to cooperation has been the relationship between India and Pakistan. That's really quite critical for the larger issue of cooperation in South Asia. And that, co that cooperation should include something like a warning system. As for the cost of installing and maintaining the system, Professor Anderson says India could provide its share of financing. But he says, the United States will have to take a leading role to help coordinate the efforts of the other countries, as well as provide some funding. Carol Pearson, VOA News.